Hey, everybody. Uh, Adam Savage in my cave, and uh, recently I cut my very first gear. This is a diametral pitch uh, 12, 14 and a half degree pressure angle, 10 tooth pinion gear. And I machined this because I've been thinking about it for a long time, and here's some shots of me making it. I'm very happy with how it came out. And it is all in service of making a large version of one of these, a flywheel car. Uh, and so uh, the gearing arrangement in this little car, which is exemplified by these gears, that is number one, that is number two, that is number, sorry, that is number one, that is number two, that is number three, and that is number four. And number four goes to the flywheel here. So I have a couple of things to do. One is I want to press this pinion into here. Today, I want to make this arrangement, which is the 46 tooth gear married to the 12 tooth gear. And I ordered one of these. Turns out I already had one because the old gearing of my drill press spindle is the same pitch. It is a DP12, 14 and a half degree pressure angle. And you can feel it when you roll this around, you write, oh, yep, that is exactly what I was, yeah, that is it. So this is great news because I need, <laughs> done messed up so all this is great ah right so the 12 marries ah, i'm just a little slow sometimes i'm making this part here that is a 12 tooth gear that is a 46 tooth gear and I have this old spindle from my drill press, from my Powermatic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine this. I'm going to machine this down until it's three quarters of an inch thick, which is matches that. Then I'm going to machine the shaft down so it's a press fit inside here. Then I'm going to bore a hole through the center of this, still in place, and. Yeah, yeah. That should get me the uh, this middle gear arrangement that I so desperately want. And it doesn't need, this is a floater, so it doesn't need any keyways of any kind. I believe this is an exactly one inch diameter hole. We're gonna double check that because I think that, yeah, it just barely fits this, which is, this is exactly one inch. So we're going to, yeah. We're basically gonna take this old piece from my drill press, which thank God I don't throw anything away, and we're gonna make it work with this, and we're gonna make that uh, little gear pairing to the lathe. First, let us determine its precise size. I'm using my telescope and gauges for this. I'm gonna take two separate readings just to make sure I'm dead on. <laughs> That is great. So for the outside, I'm gonna do this one more time. Yeah, absolutely on the money. So I'm gonna go for, um, I'm getting a reading of one inch and one thou. So I'm gonna go for one inch and three thou. I'm gonna go for two thou over and then I can bring it in. I am not gonna to touch that at all. We're just gonna. I'm gonna get some stuff on this and clean it a little bit. And then I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna cut this on my bandsaw. If you don't have to use your lathe to cut something like that, don't, frankly, because it can be very, very bad mojo. Uh, so I'm just gonna chuck this in here. Pull 
lovely. And then by the same token, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, that goes in a steel scrap pile. Much better, much better. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I thought you were over here. All right, so I'm kind of creeping up on this. I, 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 I. Okay, so it's 1.275, really? 1.275, 1.2, Right off the bat, I wanna take 200 thou off of that. Here's what I wanna do. Yeah, I want to set this like this. Okay, so this is how I'm going to figure out that it's exactly the size I want it to be. I'm going to creep up on it like this. Just an angle of that. And I'm not using this micrometer this way for my final measurements. I'm just using it to get in the ballpark. All right. So if I go 200 under that, then I'm like 5 thou over. So let's try 50 thou. Six thou over one inch, and I wanted to be three thou, so I need to come in three thou. Let's just see if I can uh, gently. All right, let's pull out my nice midutoyu outside calipers. Ooh. Are you telling me you've just got to exactly one with six thou over? Wow, okay. Wow. Oh, right. So this is going to be. Yeah, 751. Mm, nice. Uh, which means that this is also going to be 75. And that's what that is. Yes, great. That says it's dead on one inch exactly. So let's try my calipers on that. Sorry, I mean my outside micrometer. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much there. Delightful. All right, that's got to be, <laughs> it's going to be a press fit, that's for sure. I'm like one thou over. Uh, interestingly, that at one inch, this thing is about four thou off which strikes me as a kind of a lot, but you know, you double check just to make sure. This is called a chucking reamer, and I'm going to use it to make this hole precisely uh, three eighths of an inch in diameter. Uh, and that will mean it has a very nice tolerance to the shaft I'm putting in there. Let's lower the speed here.
There it is. Yeah, so that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to make. I gotta give a little bit of relief to that side so that these two can be made friendly. Now I'm gonna chuck this gear back into the, the truck, but I'm protecting it with this brass pipe that is slightly oversized. There we go. That should give me a good gription and it should allow me to take some relief off that. Let's see. Saturday night, right? Yeah, right. All right. So here's the gear. Here's the other gear. This should be sufficient to join these two. It's working. You want to see it? Oh, yeah! Okay. Whew. That was the goal. Right, that's a little bit below that, so that's not going to get in the way. That, that right there is the same as that right there, this gear, that middle one, that middle one. That's a 46 and a 12. That is a 46 and a 12. Woohoo! I'm very happy. Don't ever take a measurement with one ruler on one thing and then apply it to a different measurement from a different ruler. That is an absolute, like, yeah. Always cross check the same things. I'll just double check this with myself. This will come off that so i have to cut that thing off and that goes to that and then this goes to that yeah or actually this thing because this will embed now into there yes um so that'll be the next thing is probably press fitting part of this pinion into this malarkey um this is a beautiful casting of a hand wheel, but I'm going to use it as my fly wheel. So I'm going to go in and grind out some of these details. This, this little detail here, I'm going to grind that out. I'm going to balance this, make it really, really nice and smooth. And uh, I'm not sure you'd be able to push this to start it, but I'm kind of curious. Hey guys, I continue to work on my large version of this car, of this flywheel driven car, you know, the kind of car you, right? That's the flywheel. Okay, so for my big, don't have to worry about that. For my big uh, uh, flywheel driven car, this is the flywheel of choice. Um, and it will receive this gear. Uh, yes and that will be press fit into here. But I'm gonna do a few things to this first. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab this with my four jaw chuck, make it really nice and actually in order, it's gonna be this. I'm gonna take down these high spots here and with a, a die grinder, I'm gonna take out these high spots here and here. Then I'm gonna chuck this into my four jaw chuck and grab it really nicely. And I'm gonna machine this plate this extra part off uh, and then I'm going to drill out this center so it receives this pinion with a press fit uh, yeah 
Then I'm actually going to take this because I think it makes sense to balance it. And I'm going to build a crude wheel balancing system here and try and do that. Try and just drill some holes in here and get this so that it's reasonably well balanced. Once I've done that, then it will be roughly time to start depthing these gears. And by depthing, I mean like working out how what the hole placements are so that these things can interface with uh -oh. so that these things can interface with each other. Oh, oh, that's now. Right. Ah. Oh. 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 Really? Oh, we'll pick the bed. All right, that's a bigger mechanical advantage. I'm just gonna have to try it and see if it works. Yeah, it's a, I'm going from that to that to that. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if I'm even gonna be able to. Well, I, there's nothing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna be able to test this thing until it's done. The first thing is, oh right, grinding off this business. No, oh, it's not even gonna take it. We're not gonna take it. I think this needs to live here on the bench. That, that is something I think. This is a cordless die grinder from DeWalt. I'm really curious how well it works. So let's give it a shot. That's 25,000. Let's try it. Yeah. I can't really lock it. Is that really true? I can't lock it? Wait. Okay, so uh, I have done a pretty good job here and here. 
I'm happy with that. Um, tool tip. I would like to say how much I really appreciate this DeWalt 20-volt uh, brushless die grinder. I like the handle up here. Uh, I wish I could lock it. I totally wish I could. And I know I could lock it with a zip tie. I just didn't get around to doing that. Um, but this is a nice machine. I, I, you know, whatever battery system you invest in, and mine is DeWalt and a little bit of... Milwaukee, it's always a good idea to like once a year go and check out what new stuff they've released because frankly, this is great. I really dig how much force this brought to the to the problem. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it. I just so once you've invested in a system, you can often buy just the tool. I I don't think I paid a ton for this. Uh, and like I said, I'm very pleased. And I do think that this needs to kind of live somewhere nearby. I mean, I guess I could, uh, I guess I could embed a magnet down here, like a nice big one, and then this would do that. And the problem is stuff would, I'll think about it. Okay, to the lathe. Nothing really makes one filthier than machining cast iron, but, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, my hand wheel is now my flywheel, and I couldn't cut this part off because I needed to grab onto it, but I have brought it into a nice finish. Very happy. It's got a uh, 9 16 hole here. And uh, I'm going to press fit uh, the brass in there so I can do a 3 8 hole all the way through. Yeah, that should, for the most part, work. All right. Um, once again, uh, you can't just go by measuring gauges for stuff like that. So I found the um, I found the pin gauge that's the go, no-go gauge for this. And I machined this down to about one and a half thou over that. And so when I join these together, I'm just trying to like hold these in orientation. See, so the, the small one to the big to the small. And that goes in there. And I can, and then hold on to that to drill through it and clean the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chuck this in and clean that up a little bit, and then I'm gonna give it a, well, it's already got a set hole, doesn't it? Yeah, right, whoop. Can I just say how awesome pin gauges are? They are like, so I measured this 0.562 pin gauge, and it's 0.5619, so it's, Yeah, it's like a, that's a 10 thou under. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. Uh, and then I used my beautiful Mitutoyo digital calcs to make sure that this was um, 0. 0.63, 0. 0.563 and change. That should be the right interference fit. And the thing is between these two, I don't need a massive mechanical gription because this is the last line of just spinning. So I should be able to sink this in here. And then I've got, I have one more press fit for this project. Good. Well, oh, that's good. Check this in and clean that up. I got so excited.
providing a little spacer here so that I can get these guys going. All right, one more step has been made. This is the uh, this is the first gear that attaches to the wheels, and I have made a press fit plug for this that is about one thousand change oversize of this hole, and I'm going to press these two together. Then later I'm going to probably do a uh, what do you call it? An arbor for the keyway. Darling, darling. Oh, yeah. This is great. Oh, oh I'm going to need a cheer for that. Okay, I'm totally not concerned with this not uh, holding. That's for sure. But I'm going to be in a state. This is the first time I have, I think this is the first or second time I've actually utilized my biggest set of channel locks. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Just yank a lock right off the door with that. This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a brute force attack of an ancient line. All right. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. Now, I don't need to really do anything except add an arbor. Sorry, add a uh, keyway. And I've got, I've got some three eighths inch uh, hardware on its way. Uh, that is keyed shaft. I can't believe I don't have any of that, but I don't. Gotta, I gotta remedy that. I don't have any keyed shaft in the building. Um, so the wheels are all done. Well, the gears are done. So first we have the flywheel with the eight ten tooth gear. That connects up to the 46 tooth. So this turns 4.6 times for every time this turns. And then, actually I should do it from this way. So every time this, like, so what is 46 divided by 12? 46 divided by 12 is approximately 3.8333. So for every one revolution of this wheel, this one does 3.833. Alexa, what is 3.833 times 4.6? 3.833 times 4.6 is 17.6318. Okay, that is a 17, that's a 17 and a half to one advantage between here and here. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so the original gearing, 17.25. 
I wanted to get something pretty close to this gearing. I tried to match the gears exactly, but with a DP12, you can't do an eight tooth pinion. I, I mean, maybe you could, but I, I couldn't find it on the charts. Um, so the mechanical advantage of this is 17.25 to one. The mechanical advantage of mine will be 17.65 to one. That's awesome. I'm uh, right there in the ballpark. There's gonna be, here, I'm just gonna show you the structure here so that we can kind of agree upon it and talk about it. Well, this is roughly, oh, <laughs> Deuteronomy, that is so freaking cool. I can't even stand it. You can't even believe it. So this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, dude, it's going to be freaking awesome. So awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be the thing. I'm going to have a piece of... Yeah, I want to write this down. I have two pieces of aluminum. I may shorten them later, but for right now, they are going to be 11 inches long. I can bring them in later. And <clears throat> you climb into my head without knocking in. Uh, they really could be as low as four inches high. Yeah, four by 11, two pieces, two pieces of aluminum, four by 11. So two X, four inches by 11 inches, one quarter inch aluminum. And then I'm gonna want spacers for those. Said spacers accommodating for Yes, I think so. Five inches internal to internal. It's starting to look like a genuine thing and I'm very, very excited. Okay, so uh, now I wanna plug the wheels. I'm going to, the, the two drive wheels will be keyed to the shaft on the first gear, but the other two will be free spinning. But I need to make a hub in here because this formerly held some bearings. I actually could use the bearings for the front wheels, but I need to make these for the back wheels. So. I've got some nylon. I freaking hate this crap. I hate nylon so much. It is awful to work with. So I'm gonna use it for this project so I can use it up. This is a nice inch and, uh, inch and a half diameter tube of nylon. We're going to make one, two, three, four plugs with a three eighths inch through hole uh, in order to uh, key those back wheels to the first gear. More breastfeeding. I'm, uh, I put some bearings back in these wheels uh, and I'm gonna, I'm not afraid to use them. I'm gonna use these uh, split collars to hold them on and I'm gonna actually use this tube. Uh, so I need to turn it down. Right, I need to figure out what the exact idea of that is. This is give or take, that's 0.4, that's 0.475, right? Let's try 0.476. Nope, 0.475. Nope, 0.474. Nope, okay, 0.471. Yep, 0.472. Yep, and I think 0.473. Yep, and the dimension of that, let's try 0.474. No, it's definitely a no go. So, 0.473, yeah. 473. It's 0.472 is what that reads as. So.
Nope, just a tiny bit more. Yeah, I still feel like that's going to, yeah, that's going to be plenty of structure. I have this issue with the second stack. Can you focus, please? Thank you. And it is that I can't grab it from both sides. So I've got a shoulder bolt here. And this is reamed out to three eighths, and that should provide plenty of structure for that to grab. I've got to pull the six jaw in favor of the three jaw, which I haven't had on here since really COVID, honestly. The three jaw chuck used to be my bread and butter chuck. And Tom Lipton said, Make a six jaw chuck your bread and butter chuck because you have twice as much gription and you can be gentle on things. There we go. Oh, much more. This is a mechanical arrangement of bearings and shafts. And when you want to lock a uh, gear like this to a shaft, the best way to do it is to key it. And that is to carve a slot in here, have a slot in here and have a key that marries the two of them. Um, and that may be how I eventually do this, but right now I am going to use set screws. So I've milled a flat here and that should be plenty for the amount of torquage that uh, this engenders. So let's uh, out. <laughs> Centered enough.
so pretty. Let's get the other one in there. Oh my God, I love this drill bit. I mean, end mill. Oh. oh, ow. Right, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I love this. The nickname for this stuff, by the way, is murder foil. All right, uh, it's the next morning. We're going gangbusters here. So I'm going to, right, I'm going to this here. That there. There we are. And then that. There is nowhere to grab this thing. Okay, that's fine. I don't have to grab it. I do want to cut that. Now, okay, I'm almost there. We're almost there. function dude that is really neat oh right here is the first test oh, 
This is a slightly uphill hallway right outside of Teston's offices. So I'm just going to try and give this thing a Sometimes, <laughs> so, I must say, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for a little more verve out of this thing, but you know. Well, <laughs> look, at the very least, it's aesthetically gorgeous. <sighs> yeah, I know, I hear that rattling. I believe that means I've probably chosen not the best gear for this, or I've got them depth improperly. This is all stuff I don't know. This is how I learn stuff. Um, I will admit, I think it's aesthetically one of the, oh, wow, one of the lovelier things I have built on the machine tools, and I have a lot to learn. Um, so, what do I... Do I need to go to a much higher mechanical advantage so that I get that flywheel spinning really fast? Anyway, these are questions I have and I don't have answers right away, but um, I'm really pleased with my little buggy here. He's really pretty.